Holy Toledo. No one knows for sure where the phrase came from or whether it's a term of endearment or playful derision. Some say that it comes from the days of vaudevillians who joked that opening night in Toledo was like Holy Week everywhere else. During Prohibition, criminals called it Holy Toledo because they could hole up there without fear of arrest if they refrained from illegal activities while in town. Others believe it originated in Spain to describe the holy city of Toledo. Regardless of its true origins, it was embraced by this city because of the indisputable fact that faith is very important to the people of Northwest Ohio. The first settlers to the area wasted little time in establishing places to worship. From humble beginnings, small groups met in houses and storefronts to pray and give thanks. As they built new lives here, they also built grand spires and domes that still rise into the sky above downtown streets and ethnic neighborhoods. First Presbyterian Church of Maumee is the oldest church building in Northwest Ohio. The congregation was founded in 1820. The town of Maumee donated property for the church that was once the site of a British gun battery during the War of 1812. The interior has been renovated over the years, but still retains its simple Puritan charm reminiscent of churches in New England. A new sanctuary was built in 1969 to accommodate the growing congregation, but the original building still serves as a chapel. In 1836, downriver from Maumee, the adjacent towns of Vistula and Port Lawrence were merging to become Toledo, a muddy and untamed spot located at the terminus of the Wabash and Erie Canal. Many of the city's earliest congregations began in a frame building on Cherry and Superior Streets. It was built in the late 1830s as a meeting hall for the First Presbyterian Church. But First Congregational, Trinity Episcopal and St. Francis de Sales can all trace their history back to the same building. Trinity Episcopal held some of its first services there in the late 1830s. The current building was designed in the Gothic Revival style by architect C. C. Miller and constructed of Indiana limestone. The cornerstone was laid during the Civil War and the building consecrated on Easter Sunday, 1866. The interior features a soaring beamed roof, supporting a ceiling of golden stars on a blue field. Intricate oak choir stalls and a carved marble altar A Skinner organ was installed in 1910 with over 4,400 pipes. In 1975, church members unanimously voted to stay downtown rather than move to a new location. Trinity Episcopal is on the National Register of Historic Places and is one of Toledo's oldest and most loved churches. Salem Lutheran, on Huron Street in Toledo's Vistula neighborhood, was founded in 1842 and is the city's first and oldest Lutheran congregation. The current building was constructed in 1870. 
It was originally incorporated as the Evangelical Lutheran and Reformed Congregation, but the Reformed constituent withdrew in 1853 and started their own church on Canton Street in Toledo's early German neighborhood. They later moved to Cherry Street as the First United Church of Christ. Another group left Salem and formed St. Paul's Lutheran downtown. They built a wooden church on Erie Street across from the courthouse in 1857, and a larger brick building 10 years later. St. Paul added a Gothic-style parish house in 1924. The interior features a large balcony and a massive pipe organ. Open wood beams support the ceiling. The pews and all of the woodwork were once the original dark stain of the altar, but were refinished during the 1953 renovation. Ashland Avenue Baptist was founded in 1886. The original plans were developed by New York architects Seibel and Miller with medieval and Romanesque design influences. But their vision for the building was too large and expensive, so Toledo architect David L. Stein, who also designed the Lucas County Courthouse, downsized the original plans. He designed the interior of the sanctuary as a variation on the Akron plan, a popular style among evangelical churches in the late 19th century, which featured a large open area surrounded by smaller rooms or balconies that could be closed off to teach Sunday school classes. Stein's vision infused an arched ceiling and exposed wooden beams with sunlight filtered through stained glass windows to create a warm and inspiring place for worship. The Ashland Avenue building is on the National Register of Historic Places. It was sold in 2006 and is now home to Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church. B'nai Israel is Toledo's oldest Jewish congregation and was founded in 1866 they used a frame building at 12th and Woodruff Streets until 1913, when they built a large synagogue and Hebrew school on the corner of Bancroft and 12th. The arts and craft style design features large windows which fill the space with light. The main floor sat 700, with room for 300 more in the balcony. A round art glass dome rests 50 feet above the curved wooden pews. When B'nai Israel moved to a new location on Kenwood Boulevard, the space became home to a Christian congregation. The true Church of God of the Apostolic Faith has worshipped here since 1957. In 1842, Father Amadeus Rapp established St. Francis de Sales as the first Catholic church in Toledo. It began in the same building that had earlier nurtured most of the city's Protestant congregations. Construction began on a new building in 1862 and was completed eight years later. Vaulted ceilings and finely carved moldings abound. The ceilings, now trimmed in brown, were once silver with the vaulted tracery and columns painted gold. St. Francis served as Toledo's cathedral from 1910 until 1940 and was once regarded as the most magnificent church in the city until a fire in 1931 destroyed the hand-carved altar and the organ. The windows and pews are still original but wood paneling was installed after the fire. St. Francis de Sales was host to the consecration of three bishops and thousands of baptisms. 
In its early years, St. Francis served as a melting pot of Toledo's Catholics. Germans, Irish, Poles, and other immigrants all worshiped there until an ethnic community grew large enough to support churches of their own. The first three Catholic churches were all within two blocks of each other. German Catholics founded St. Mary's just a few blocks north on Cherry Street in 1854, which featured a towering steeple clock. The French organized St. Joseph's Catholic Church at the corner of Erie and Locust. German Catholics from East Toledo established Sacred Heart Parish. The congregation laid the cornerstone in July of 1900, and the first Mass was celebrated in the Finnish church on Christmas Day, 1906. The design style is German Gothic Romanesque and constructed of Sandusky limestone. The green patina of the copper roof is visible from both sides of the river. The interior features stunning hand-painted art glass windows depicting the life of Christ. They were ordered in 1914, but because of World War I, did not arrive until 1922. A fire destroyed the sanctuary, organ, and two of the art glass windows in 1975, but Sacred Heart was restored and completely renovated in 2003. St. Mark's Lutheran Church was established in 1884. The interior features a deep wraparound balcony and divine stained glass windows. Early services were conducted in German, but in 1890, the congregation split over the issue of language. Those who wanted services in English formed Martin Luther Evangelical Lutheran Church right around the corner. The congregation built this church in 1911. Large stained glass windows, handmade pews, and an ornately carved angelic lectern grace the interior. A matching lectern is located in St. John's Lutheran Church on Toledo's near south side. The church was founded in 1863 by members of Salem Lutheran who wanted a church closer to home. St. John's Steeple has been a prominent landmark since 1874. Right around the corner from St. John's is St. Peter and Paul Catholic Church. It was established in 1866 to serve Toledo's growing population of German Catholics. They quickly outgrew their first church building and this one was dedicated in 1875. Fire ravaged the interior in 1926, destroying the organ, pews, and stained glass. The original oak altar was replaced with one made of white Italian marble. In 1927, the diocese opened Our Lady of Guadalupe as a mission for the city's Mexican immigrants. It later merged with Saints Peter and Paul. What once was a predominantly German parish now serves Toledo's Hispanic community. Third Baptist is Toledo's first African-American Baptist church. Its members split from First Baptist in 1868. They dedicated this building at the corner of Pinewood and Division Streets in 1927. The sanctuary still features a curving wood-faced balcony and the original stained glass windows. Third Baptist may not be Toledo's largest church, but the congregation celebrated its 140th anniversary in 2008. Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox was chartered in 1915 to serve Toledo's Greek community the congregation bought property and began construction of a Byzantine-style domed church. It celebrated its first divine liturgy on Christmas Day, 1920. 
Religious icons and scenes from scripture are depicted in the vibrant stained glass windows, paintings, and mosaic tile work throughout the church. A magnificent golden dome with painted icons of the saints and Jesus Christ is at the center of the nave, above a massive chandelier. In 1987, Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Church was elevated to cathedral status by the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America. The ethnic neighborhood of Birmingham was established in 1890 when a group of Hungarian workers from Cleveland were transferred to a factory in East Toledo. Hungarian Catholics attended Mass at Sacred Heart until St. Stephen's Parish was founded in 1898. It is named for the first king of Hungary. This building was completed in 1914 of a Christian basilica design typical of many churches in Hungary. The exterior features twin 105-foot towers with copper domes and crosses. The building is capped by a tile roof and decorated with terracotta figures. Stained glass windows around the church depict the lives of Hungarian saints. Hand-painted murals decorate the ceiling above the altar. A pipe organ was added in 1918. The church was renovated for its 50th anniversary and Italian mosaics of Christ and the Virgin Mary were installed on the two side altars. Calvin United Church of Christ began as the Magyar or Hungarian Reformed Church on the corner of Bogar and Bakewell Streets. It was built in 1903 to serve Hungarian Protestants in the Birmingham neighborhood. In 1959, it joined other Reformed congregations across the country as part of the United Church of Christ. The exterior is constructed of limestone trimmed with marble. Ornate columns and moldings support a slender, neo-baroque style steeple. The interior features stained glass windows, antique wooden altar pieces, and a large pipe organ that occupies most of the balcony. St. George's Antiochian Orthodox Congregation was founded in 1913 in the Syrian and Lebanese community of North Toledo. They built their first church at Erie and Elm Streets in 1920. The congregation moved to West Toledo in 1974. St. George is the Cathedral of the Diocese of Toledo and the Midwest. It is the home of the bishop who oversees Antiochian Orthodox churches in several Midwestern states. The cathedral is richly decorated with mosaics, stained glass windows, and painted icons of Jesus Christ and the saints. Toledo's first Polish immigrants began arriving after the Civil War. Most were Catholic and settled into one of the city's two Polish neighborhoods. The area off Nebraska Avenue was called Kuschwanz, which was German for cow's tail. It was served by St. Anthony's, which was dedicated in 1894 and featured the tallest steeple in the city. The Lagrinka neighborhood around Lagrange Street was served by two parishes. St. Hedwig is the oldest. It was constructed of Sandusky blue limestone and opened in 1875. Its Gothic architecture is reminiscent of the large cathedrals of Poland. The interior features vaulted ceilings and wonderful carved woodwork. 
The LaGrange Street community grew rapidly, and the diocese established St. Adelbert in 1907. It soon became the largest parish in the diocese, and the congregation dedicated this building in 1928. St. Adelbert's design is in the Spanish mission style. A bronze statue of Pope John Paul II welcomes parishioners, and golden angels flank the main entrance. The interior inspires thoughts of Polish country churches with exposed wooden beams and a glorious altar. St. Michael's Ukrainian Catholic is a small church nestled on Walnut Street in Rossford. It was founded in 1911 by Ukrainian immigrants who came to Northwest Ohio to work in Edward Ford's glass factory. The company donated land to each immigrant group to build a church. The original building was made of wood, but in 1949 the parishioners built the current brick structure. St. Michael's Ukrainian is a Byzantine Catholic Church, which, although independent from the Toledo Catholic Diocese, is still under the guidance of the Pope. Icons of Christ and the saints adorn the hand-carved iconostasis that separates the altar from the nave. The walls of the tiny church are lined with colorful stained glass windows. There is no organ nor any musical instrument in the church. St. Michael's congregation sing all hymns a cappella. The Irish built three Catholic churches that are some of the most magnificent and inspiring places in the city. The historic Church of St. Patrick's is the oldest of the Irish parishes and is on the National Register of Historic Places. The towering Gothic building is constructed of sandstone. Credit for design of the church is given to Father Edward Hannon, the first priest at St. Patrick's. Work on the building was halted for a year to allow the foundation of the new church to settle. It was completed in time for Christmas services in 1900. The vaulted ceiling is supported by 10 red granite columns. The stained glass transept windows depict the Nativity and St. Patrick at the birth of Christianity in Ireland. In the 20s, a terrazzo floor was installed with inlaid green shamrocks. In 1980, the steeple was struck by lightning. The resulting fire threatened to destroy the entire church. But the heroic efforts of Toledo's firefighters kept the fire from spreading. An altar within the sanctuary is dedicated to St. Florian, the patron saint of firefighters. In 2007, a bequest from a longtime parishioner replaced the steeple atop the historic church of St. Patrick, thus repairing the hole in the Toledo skyline that existed for almost 30 years. Immaculate Conception Parish was established in 1867 when Father Hannon divided the congregation of St. Patrick's. Parishioners living south of Swan Creek, in the neighborhood they called the Darby, became members of Immaculate Conception. By 1892, the congregation had outgrown two churches and construction began on the current building. Immaculate Conception Parish was gutted by fire in 1920. And although the exterior remains essentially unchanged, the original roof was 20 feet higher. The restoration of the building was completed in 1937 and features a marble pulpit and altar. The rose window was inspired by Westminster Abbey in London. 
In 2004, Immaculate Conception was renovated to preserve the historic church for future service. Good Shepherd Parish in East Toledo was founded in 1873. The first Mass was held in a railroad roundhouse, and the Gospel reading was John's story of the Good Shepherd. Ground was broken on the new church on St. Patrick's Day, 1899. The new church was complete by Christmas of 1901. The exterior is constructed of limestone in the Romanesque style. The building site is one of the city's highest elevations, so its copper-plated dome and bell towers rise above the east side. The interior is trimmed in green and gold and features multiple large rose windows. The dome sits 75 feet above the nave. Other stained glass windows depict the 12 apostles and over 20 angels. Toledo was growing rapidly in the early 20th century. As people began moving away from downtown and into new neighborhoods, established congregations either followed them or newer houses of worship were built to serve their spiritual needs. First Congregational Church is Toledo's oldest religious organization, dating back to 1833. It was located on St. Clair Street in the heart of Toledo's business district. In 1913, First Church merged with Central Congregational Church and services were held at their Collingwood Avenue location. The old downtown church was converted into a movie theater. In 1914, construction began on the lot adjoining the old Central Congregational Church. The brick and stone Renaissance style structure features six ionic columns supporting the detailed pediment above the main entrance. The interior is just as beautiful. The black walnut pews and brass balcony railings are from the St. Clair Street Church, as well as the eight Tiffany stained glass windows above the choir loft. The four windows on the north wall of the church are some of the last and greatest ever created by Lewis Comfort Tiffany's studio. The center window features the ascension of Christ above his astonished disciples. To its left, we see the embodiment of truth armed with sword and torch beside Lady Justice and her scales. The windows in the south wall were designed and built in the studios of Letterly and Geisler of New York. They feature large nuggets of faceted glass fused into the windows, which shimmer like gemstones. A 12-sided brick dome supports both the chandelier and a crown of stained glass windows. The windows of First Congregational are some of the finest in the country and the building is on the National Register of Historic Places. Next door to First Congregational Church is the former site of the Collingwood Temple. Toledo's reformed Jewish congregation, Shomer Emunim, was founded in the 1870s. The Moorish-style temple was built in 1916. 
the synagogue expanded twice during the 1950s. When the congregation moved to Sylvania in 1973, the building was sold to the Toledo Board of Education before returning to religious service as a church. But architectural clues to the temple's original use still exist. St. Mark's Episcopal Church began in 1889. A Victorian frame building on Collingwood Avenue served the growing Old West End congregation until 1903, when this academic Gothic church was built. St. Mark's was designed by two of the foremost ecclesiastical architects in America, Bertram Goodhue and Ralph Adams Cram, who also created the chapel at West Point. The tall exterior walls of the church, with its high windows, give St. Mark's the appearance of an ancient fortress. The interior features exposed brick and stone, and high windows with pearlescent glass set above the low stone arches. A large Gothic stained glass window is set into the rear wall. The ceiling, pews, and chancel are made from Flemish oak. The building was constructed in stages over the years and initially incorporated the original Victorian church, but a new parish house was added in 1928. The first Unitarian church at Collingwood and Bancroft was designed in 1923 by architect Edwin Lewis. The red brick colonial structure features a white steeple and clock tower ionic columns and tall windows. The interior continues the colonial revival style. White columns with detailed corner moldings accent the space. The pews are trimmed in mahogany. Although the Unitarians moved to a new location in 2007, the historic church is still in service with another congregation. Toledo's first Church of Christ scientist was founded in 1890. The members worshipped in rooms and rented buildings until they built their own church at Monroe and Lawrence in 1899. It was the first Christian science building in the state and only the third in the world and is on the National Register of Historic Places. The growing popularity of the faith caused the need for another congregation. The second Church of Christ Scientist was established in 1915, but World War I delayed the construction for six years. The building was designed to give an impression of peace and restfulness. The interior is inspired by the Italian Renaissance. Columns separate the foyer from the main auditorium, a wide, open, rectangular space that is bathed in natural light. The original congregations of both Christ Scientist churches have relocated, but the buildings continue in service to God. St. Martin de Pours was founded in 1989 as a merger of the St. Anne and St. Teresa parishes. The unified parishes assemble in what was originally St. Anne's Catholic Church. It was established in 1898 to serve the Auburndale neighborhood of Toledo. St. Anne's congregation built this large Romanesque church of limestone and granite in 1924. The interior features painted murals behind the altar. Colonnades run the length of the church with stained glass windows above. An arch-top balcony cove houses a large pipe organ, which frames a beautiful rose window. Above it all is an amazing coffered ceiling of painted and embossed panels and murals. The building is on the National Register of Historic Places. The First Baptist Church of Toledo was founded in 1853 they met in a union hall for two years until they built a brick church at Huron and Cherry Streets. 
in 1924, First Baptist, like many other houses of worship, followed their parishioners to the Old West End and began construction of an imposing building complex near the corner of Central and Collingwood. The church was designed in the English Gothic style by architect Charles Langdon. The exterior walls and the 107-foot tower are of rough limestone, trimmed with cut stone. The interior has plastered walls trimmed with cut Indiana limestone. The building originally held 39 stained glass windows. Some salute biblical figures and prophets, as well as Baptist leaders and modern-day apostles. First Baptist moved their congregation to Holland in 1980, and the building was sold to the true Church of God, but they took two of the stained glass windows with them the Last Supper, and the baptism of Jesus that were originally in the narthex on Collingwood have been restored and installed in the First Baptist Church on Pilead Road. Collingwood Presbyterian was organized in 1893. The congregation purchased property on Collingwood and built their church of Berea sandstone, which has weathered over the years. The design incorporates Gothic and Romanesque elements and some that are purely whimsical. The capitals of the columns near the entrance feature faces that were carved to resemble members of the congregation at the time. In 1926, a community house was added and the building now encompasses an entire block of Collingwood. The interior features a vaulted ceiling made of lightweight Belgian linen. Four rose windows sit high in the ceiling, and memorial windows line the outside walls. The sanctuary was renovated in 1955, and a new pulpit, lectern, and communion table were added. A new organ was installed in the balcony with 3,500 pipes. When the Diocese of Toledo was created in 1910, St. Francis de Sales, the oldest church in the city, was its cathedral. The growing population of the Old West End made Collingwood Avenue an ideal location for a new cathedral. Architect William R. Perry designed a Spanish Plateresque cathedral constructed of granite and limestone. Work began in 1925 and it was dedicated 15 years later. The impressive facade of the cathedral features massive statues of Saints Peter and Paul on its two octagonal towers. The cathedral is 285 feet long and 215 feet wide. A lofted Spanish ceiling rests 96 feet above the marble floor. Frescoes decorate the ceiling and walls of the cathedral with biblical figures and scenes. The artists use mineral paints which will last for centuries and actually get brighter over time. A cathedral is the principal church of a diocese because it contains the bishop's chair, the cathedra. It is essentially the bishop's church and is both architecturally and visually significant but it also serves as the neighborhood parish of the Old West End. The large crucifix suspended from the ceiling is made of European walnut. The pulpit and its canopy are of white oak from Germany. The 
artistry of this cathedral is intended to glorify God while creating an atmosphere of peace and tranquility for the faithful. In 1937, St. Elias Antiochian Orthodox Church was created by members of St. George's congregation. Their first church at Huron and Mulberry Streets was dedicated in 1940. Forty years later, the congregation moved into its new home in Sylvania. The domed Byzantine building is richly decorated inside and out. Radiant stained glass windows line the walls. The dome is painted in vibrant, bold colors. St. Paul's Episcopal of Maumee was founded in 1836. They built this church five years later on land donated by Judge James Walcott. Over the years, the congregation has added a parish hall and education building and installed a Carillon bell tower. The Neo-Gothic church has a peaked roof, and some of the original hand-hewn beams still have bark on them. The tall lancet windows feature a patchwork of colored glass panels with designs inset at the top. St. Joseph Catholic Church in Maumee began in 1831. The present building was dedicated in 1892 and originally had a steeple, but it was struck by lightning and destroyed and not rebuilt. Twin angels flank the doorway with the message, Go ye into his presence with joy. Two more angels with shell bowls of holy water greet visitors as they enter the church. A large balcony covers the back of the church with an arching vaulted ceiling above it.
tall stained glass memorial windows decorate each side. Side altars to the Virgin Mary and Joseph flank the chancel. And a large crucifix floats suspended below the gold embossed ceiling. In 1954, Muslim immigrants from Syria and Lebanon built the first Islamic center on East Bancroft Street in Toledo. It was the first mosque in Ohio. But by the early 70s, the growing Muslim community needed a larger place to worship. They purchased property in Perrysburg, near I-75, and broke ground on the first classic Islamic-style mosque in the United States. It opened in 1983, and although the new location was easily visible from the interstate, the interior remained a mystery to all but the faithful. Chandeliers hang from the ceiling of the dome in the prayer room. A low wall separates prayer areas for men and women. The minbar is the elevated wooden seat where the imam sits during sermons. Inset into the base of the dome are stained glass windows of geometric patterns with an attribute of God written in Arabic. Work began on St. Rose Catholic Church in 1889. The Gothic Revival style parish was designed by John Burkhart of Kenton, Ohio. It is built of Sandusky bluestone with sandstone arches over the doors. The steeple rises 170 feet above the city of Perrysburg. A large marble statue of St. Rose of Lima, the church's patron saint, was installed above the main entrance in 1909. The interior walls are frescoed and lined with leaded stained glass windows. The ceiling is so deeply vaulted, it threatens to touch the floor.
These houses of worship, regardless of denomination, are an inspirational testament to the power of faith. They are houses of God, but they were built by man and are unfortunately subject to the laws of nature and the ravages of time. Each glorious edifice should be treasured. They are touchstones that mark the history of our congregations and our community.